Have you ever been on a trip and thought to yourself, why can't this last longer? Whether your dream is drinking cocktails on a beach, road tripping in a van, backpacking through Southeast Asia, or wandering through the cobbled streets of Europe, I'm sure your biggest concern is probably how to afford to travel more, or better yet, how to afford to travel full time. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 steps for planning your finances so that you're one step closer to having the freedom to be able to travel for months or years at a time. We'll cover the accounts you need to set up, how to increase your income, and be sure to stay to the end to learn some unconventional ways to save money while you're on the road. All in this episode of Lucas World Travel. So hey, world travelers, I'm Kendra Lucas of Lucas World Travel. And David and I have been traveling over three years full time with the strategies I'm about to show you now. It does take time to set up, but I do believe it's worth it to get that freedom to be able to live your dream and to travel full time. Just imagine working five, seven years and being able to take a full year off to travel. And if you do that every decade in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, that's five full years of full-time travel right in your prime working years before you retire. So these strategies really can set you up for a life of freedom, adventure, and a lot more time to live your dreams. So we'll start with the easy strategies first and work our way up to the more advanced, more complex strategies later. Please keep in mind though that these more advanced strategies will take some time and effort to master and learn, but they are definitely worth the effort because they will give you the biggest return on investment so you have more money to travel. So now let's jump right into the 10 steps you'll need to save for long-term travel. Now, step number one is to track your spending and saving. You want to track these numbers with the goal of decreasing your expenses month by month and at the same time, increasing your savings month by month because it's impossible to save money when you're not keeping track of where your money is going and without setting a clear budget. Even while I'm traveling, I'm keeping track of every dollar, every euro, every peso that I'm spending. So I can be very conscious about how I invest my money. Now I used to use a simple Google spreadsheet to keep track of my budget, but currently I'm enjoying using the app Mint to do that. I like Mint because it gamifies the budgeting and saving process so it's actually a lot more fun and a lot less tedious. It makes it so easy to import all my credit cards, checking accounts into the app so I don't physically have to type anything in. I only have to add in cash transactions and it categorizes all my spending for me, giving me beautiful color codes and helping me know where I could cut back on spending and where I could add in more savings. It makes it so fun to see your net worth going up month by month. So if you want a fun, easy, and highly motivating way to increase your savings, definitely check out Mint. And the best part, it's completely free. Now, a lot of being able to travel long-term is setting up the financial accounts you need to be able to save and spend money internationally without getting hit by loads of fees. So the second essential step is to set up the financial accounts that have the most benefits for international travel. Now, this one does take a little bit of research, especially depending on what country you're living in but the right financial accounts can lead to you earning hundreds in passive income while you're saving for this big trip. So please make sure not to leave this money on the table. Now, the first account that I recommend setting up is a high yield savings account. For example, with this LA account, you could earn one to 4% interest per year. The best part is this account has no minimums, no fees, and it simply earns you money risk-free. Naturally, when you get started, you'll only be earning a few cents a month. But over the years of your savings, you can start earning $30 a month, $100 a month, just by having your money in one place. So whatever amount I choose to save per month, 
I take about 80% of that and put it in the high yield savings account. But I also put 20% in a more risky stock investment as well. The next account you should set up is a checking account that does not have any international withdrawal fees. For this, I like the Charles Schwab Investor Checking Account. This is the only checking account that I know of that will refund ATM fees from any ATM worldwide. And this feature alone saves me $30 to $50 a month in refunds from ATM fees wherever I use them, no matter what country. Plus, I'm getting an excellent exchange rate with the bank. So I always decline the conversion from the ATM itself and always use the exchange rate from my bank directly. Accounts like this really help your money last longer because you're not getting nickeled and dimed for every little transaction that you make. Another benefit of this account is that it automatically comes with a brokerage account as well. Now what a brokerage account is, is just a place where you're on the stock market and you can buy stocks and bonds there. So this makes it easy for me to put that 20% of savings there and invest it in stocks once I have enough to buy a full stock. As I mentioned before though, because of the risk involved with investing in stocks, that's why I only put 20% into the brokerage account. But if your risk tolerance and knowledge of the stock market is higher than mine, feel free to invest more because you really can earn more that way. We're talking about I earn maybe 12% on my stock investments per year versus the savings account is only like two or 3% per year. And over the lifetime of the account, the, my investments have gone up a full 60%, which is really encouraging. But I can't lie, there were several months and years where all my investments were down 30%. So that volatility is so disheartening when you see your money shrink 30%. Terrifying. But that's why I like to limit my risk and only put 20% of my savings there instead of 100%. And my favorite stock strategy is to buy and hold. I come into it with the mindset of that I'm gonna buy this stock and hold it forever, even though I know that I will eventually sell it when I need it for money for travel. I also like to buy stocks that pay dividends. And what a dividend is, is just money that you earn every quarter or every month just from owning the stock. It could just be a quarter, it could even be as high as a dollar, but you earn that for each stock that you own. And one long-term goal is to have enough stocks that you can live off of your dividend payments without ever selling any stock or using any of the stock. So your investments are always in place and you never lose them. So it's like your network never decreases. This strategy does take decades but it's a strategy that I think about for future complete financial freedom and for retirement as well. But the topic of investing is entirely too big for this overview. So if you really wanna learn more, get more knowledge and increase your chances of succeeding with your investments, I highly recommend that you try some courses on Skillshare. I've taken several courses there on stock investing and dividend investing, and they really increase my success rate in choosing good stocks. And if you use the link in the description box below, you can start with a free month. Because really and truly, investing in knowledge is always gonna give you the highest returns. But once you get these savings, checking, and brokerage accounts set up, the next thing you wanna do is to set up automatic transfers to these accounts so you can save on autopilot. So for example, if you're able to save $500 a month, 80% of that would be 400. So you can send 400 to your high yield savings account and then the other 100 to your brokerage account. Make sure to add these accounts to your Mint app so you're able to see your net worth grow month after month. Now to save up for full-time travel, you're wanting to save at least 2,500 to $3,000 per month per person. 
So that's about 30,000 to 36,000 per year minimum to start full-time travel. And I recommend go ahead, take that number up to 40,000. So you have some cushion to get plane tickets home and to restart your life again when you come back to your home country. Now at a savings rate of $500 a month, it's gonna take you about five years to reach that amount of money. But it does get progressively faster and faster with all the interest you're earning and with your investments growing as well. Once you get these accounts set up, then you can focus on getting cash back with credit card rewards. Now credit cards are another amazing financial product that can help you get cash back on purchases that you were gonna make anyway, and even earn free flights, which is one of your major expenses when you travel full time. To get started though, I do like the Bank of America Travel Rewards card. The good thing about this card is that there's no annual fee and you can redeem your points for travel expenses and get cash back on your statement. This one returns about $50 in travel expenses to our account every month, which is excellent considering this card has no annual fees whatsoever. However, there are plenty of cards that have a lot more bonuses as well. And naturally, if your preferred airline offers you a credit card option, you might wanna take them up on that offer as well because airline credit cards are one of the fastest ways to earn points and earn free flights. Of course, though, there are three things that you must do in order to make these credit cards work for you and not work against you. The first thing is you have to make sure that you pay your balance off every single month because the point of the credit card is to earn money through bonuses and points and not spend money on interest. Because if you're spending money on interest, you're actually hindering your chances of starting long-term travel. The second thing you wanna keep in mind, you don't wanna enroll in more than one credit card per quarter. This is because these credit card companies only allow you 90 days to reach the spending requirements in order to get your bonuses. So you really need to focus on those 90 days, making sure you meet all of the requirements so you can get your bonuses. So the third thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna set a calendar reminder about one month before your annual fee is due. And you wanna review of how much benefit you got out of these credit cards, whether you used all the features and rewards, and whether you think it's gonna be worth paying the annual fee however much it costs to continue with that card. If you don't think that card offers enough benefits, you really should cancel the card and move on to something else. Credit cards really do require a bit of work to manage and they are not always free, but I do believe that the rewards you get far outweigh the costs, especially if you don't wind up paying any interest on them. Well, now that you got all your financial accounts set up, the next thing you should focus on is trying to increase your income. Let's face the facts. You're gonna be able to hit the road a lot faster if you're able to increase your income. So here's several strategies on how to do that. The first option is to apply for higher paying jobs. And I highly recommend you do this at your current job first. Without even looking online to seeing what's available, just talk to your manager or talk to the people in HR. You can ask for more responsibilities and more pay for the job that you're doing currently. And as an excuse, you can say that you're looking for more opportunities to learn and grow in your career. The best part is that one simple conversation with your manager or HR representative can really help increase your pay but there is always a chance that there is no room for growth at your current company. But no big deal. Changing jobs every two to three years is a great way to increase your income and increase your um, skills as you're gonna learn different skills at different companies. And just like with investing, you can use Skillshare to learn more about how to improve your resume and how to interview better so you can really impress those new employers. Another strategy is to get a second job working nights and weekends. 
uh, part-time jobs are pretty easy to get in restaurants, grocery stores, and retail stores. And an easy way to earn an extra $600 to $1,000 a month, which could put you well on your way to starting your full-time travel journey. My favorite way to earn money online, though, is to do freelance work. You can do this by starting an account on Upwork or Fiverr, being a virtual assistant, designing websites and logos, copywriting, or you can take on any of the other hundreds of tasks that small entrepreneurs need. You can also create passive income by creating online courses, which is our biggest source of online income so far. You can also create eBooks, do affiliate marketing on blogs, or earn ad revenue from a YouTube channel. The best part about these online options is that you can take them on the road with you as you travel. So you don't have to stop earning income while you're on the road. And the only drawback of uh, online income is the steep learning curve. It can take a while to figure it all out. And honestly, getting a job is way easier than building your online business from the ground up. But when you can figure out the online income streams, it really is liberating and your income potential is unlimited. So it's very financially beneficial as well. Just remember that as you increase your income though, that you do not increase your spending. You wanna make sure everything you earn in addition goes directly to your savings and not into your spending. Now, if you plan on saving for five years or longer, I do recommend investing in real estate as well. Now I know it can be counterintuitive to buy something expensive like real estate when you're trying to save money for travel, but stick with me here because once you sell your house, you could be walking away from the table with an extra 30 to $60,000 in addition to the 30,000 in cash that you saved. And this estimate is very conservative. We know plenty of people who walk away with $150,000 or $200,000 from selling their house. So it's potentially a very high money earner when you sell a property. Plus you need somewhere to live anyway. So you might as well be investing that money in the property instead of just giving it away to your landlord and never seeing any return on that. Naturally, buying a property is a very complex strategy, so you wanna do some research on your hometown market to see whether prices are steadily increasing, staying the same, or decreasing. Because depending on your market, if your market is very expensive, like San Francisco, with prices that are a million dollars per home, then yes, it's probably going to be too expensive for you to try that market. But honestly, if the home prices are that high, you might want to consider relocating to another city because as soon as you decrease your living expenses, you increase the quality of your life. And with lower expenses and having a home that's appreciating in value year after year, it is gonna make it easier for you to build up that financial cushion where you can travel more. So follow where the opportunities lie and that could lead you to more financial freedom. Now, because of the sale of our home, we've been able to travel for three years plus. And we definitely would not have been able to save up that much cash from our salaries alone. So this option is really your best bet for getting a high return on your investment. An even better option that I just wished we did is to invest in a duplex, triplex, or quadruplex. Now with these properties, if you set them up from the get-go as a business, you can actually get a loan for the entire purchase price of these types of properties. You can live in one unit and then rent out all of the rest of the units earning plenty of rental income from them. So essentially you'll be able to live rent free and save even more for your trip. And when you're finally ready to go on your trip, you can rent out the unit you're living in and have multiple tenants and multiple little sources of income so you can travel. Now, while I do believe rental income is a great way to earn money while you travel, I only recommend renting out property if you have more than one property. If you only have one single family home, 
then you don't want to rent it out. You just want to sell it and get rid of it because from all the landlords that I know, essentially 100% of them have at one time or another had a tenant that stopped paying rent or that damaged their property. And if you only have one property, that means that you're not earning any money on it, you're losing money on it, and you're gonna have to pay a lot to fix any repairs or to go through the legal fees to get the tenant out. So that's why I want you to cover your bases and have less risk by having multiple properties. So when you have two, three, four properties, it's a lot less likely that all four are gonna stop paying rent. So you do have some way, some way to cover your bases when you have multiple units like that. As you can tell, I'm really cautious when it comes to taking financial risks. So I really like to cover my bases as much as possible. Now, at least six months before you leave for your trip, you want to start selling everything. Selling everything not only earns you money, but it also saves you money so you don't have to rent a storage unit later on. Facebook Marketplace under this icon right here is a great place to sell furniture, your odds and ends, cars, any and everything that you can think of. However, if your items are worth more than the annual fees for storage, then you may want to budget for a year's worth of storage in your savings as well. And potentially think about selling your car, especially if you still have a loan on your car go ahead, sell it, get rid of it. However, if you own your car, because car rental prices are so expensive now, and also buying a car is so expensive now, you might want to figure out a way to keep it, um, find a way to store it for free with a friend or family member, or find a way to rent it out for a year, either to a friend or family member, or to find someone online who would like to rent a car for a year. Allow at least six months for your home to sell. Sometimes they do sell very quickly in under 30 days, but in some countries and some markets, it can take six months to a year to sell a property. But this is why selling everything will be your last step, but it does take quite a lot of time. You don't wanna wait till the last month because that is very stressful. You wanna try to sell things slowly, try to sell the things you need the least first, so that by the time you're getting to the last two months, you have less and less stuff in your home to get rid of. Next, let's talk about how to save money while you're on the road. So my first big tip on how to save money while you're on the road is to travel to low cost countries. You wanna think of countries in Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, and Central and South America. Now the most affordable countries in Southeast Asia include the Philippines, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Thailand. For Eastern Europe, you can check out Croatia, Montenegro, Bosnia, Bulgaria, Serbia, and Albania. In Central and South America, you can check out Guatemala, Nicaragua, Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. Now in these areas of the world, country hopping is quite easy and economical. A lot of the times you can take buses or trains in between these locations, making it even more economical for you. As a couple, I could tell you that our full-time travel expenses can be as low as $4,000 a month. Um, so that's about $2,000 per person per month but it can get as expensive as $7,000 a month in more expensive countries like Spain and in Costa Rica. So that can take you up to $3,500 per person per month. So if you want your money to go further, definitely focus on those more affordable countries to maximize your budget. Another way to save money while you travel is to consider ways to get free accommodation while you travel. Your first option is couchserving.com. Now this website is full of passionate travelers who don't mind sharing their accommodation with fellow travelers. It is labor intensive in the sense that you have to contact multiple hosts and build rapport with them to see if they'll be willing to host you during your stay in a particular city. But it is worth the effort if you can both meet a local 
and get free accommodations at the same time. Another good option is workaway.info. Here, locals who may need some work done at their house, hostel, farm, or volunteer agency might uh, put up an ad asking for people to work in exchange for accommodation and sometimes even food as well. But if you love animals, an even better option could be trustedhousesitters.com. This is where you can house sit people's pets in exchange for free accommodations. And it can be quite enjoyable to have a very adorable animal to play with while you travel and experience new countries and new cities. All three of these sites have a small annual fee though, but if you get even just one free stay, that pretty much covers the cost of the site for the year. My last big tip is to have an exit plan because it's just as important to know how you're gonna end your trip as to know how you're gonna start it. So plan to have a fund saved up so you have money to buy a plane home and also see if you can ask a family member or friend if you can stay with them for a couple of weeks or a month while you get back up on your feet after your year of travel. But if you don't have anyone you can stay with, um, just make sure to save a couple of months worth of expenses so you're able to fund yourself while you're getting back up on your feet. Also, about two to four weeks before you return home, you can start applying for jobs so that when you return, you will already have some interviews lined up. After a full year of travel though, your perspective is gonna change so much. And there really is no telling what direction you're gonna go in. You could decide you wanna go back to your hometown. You could decide you wanna relocate to somewhere new. You could decide you're gonna live abroad permanently. You could fall in love and there's just no telling what direction your life is gonna go in after this year of travel. And do keep things flexible because that's a part of living the dream as well. When you do return to work though, you're gonna return refreshed, full of new motivation and ideas, and excited because you know you can repeat this process in another five to seven years, and then take another year off to travel. And the process becomes easier and easier every year, both because you're more experienced and because typically the older you get, the more you earn. Anyway, it's always better to save your money than to save your dreams. And I really hope that these 10 steps will help you live your dreams of full-time travel sooner rather than later. Now, if you wanna see why we quit our jobs and sold everything to travel the world, you can check out that video right here. And don't forget to subscribe for more travel tips coming very soon. As always, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sharing with all your travel buddies and happy travel planning until next time. Bye.